Well, God is able to meet anyone at their point of need. There is no telling when or how he will show up. For many years, Jeanette Musselman's faith journey was an emotional roller coaster. As a Christian, she experienced times of such deep sorrow that she didn't want to live. Carrying a laundry basket down a hall in her home, her life was changed forever. I can't wait to hear about it. Jeanette, welcome from Kitchener. Thank you. And you had a religious life. You attended church faithfully. What was missing? Jesus, even oh. though I was um, in, in a church all my life and I went to church faithfully and I, I uh, talked to, to the Lord, I didn't have a personal relationship with him. I had never heard about being born again or ever asking Jesus into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. But one day at a Christmas function, my sister who had become born again asked me if I would like to ask Jesus to come into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. And I'm thinking, I've never heard this before. Um, I don't think that this is necessary. Um, I go to church. I'm a good person. And, and all this was going through my mind when she was asking this of me and waiting for my response. And I was too embarrassed to say no to her. So I said the prayer with her, but I didn't mean it. Oh. But you know, God knows our heart and he knows whether we mean it or not. And so she was all happy and excited, but I knew that I hadn't meant it. But the next day when I was in my home and carrying that laundry basket down the hall of my home, I can still picture it right now uh, in going towards the back bedrooms of my home. The Holy Spirit asked me a question and I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit because I didn't know that God speaks to us. Mm -hmm. And but it was in the form of a question and I heard it so clear and um, I had to answer that question and the question was do you really want Jesus in your heart because you see God knew I really didn't mean it so he was giving me another chance do you really want Jesus in your heart and I had to answer that question and so I thought about it it wasn't long maybe a few seconds and I said yes I want Jesus in my heart and that's when I became born again. That's when God, the Father, threw a party for me in heaven. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know anything about the Bible, but that's how I got saved. Praise the Lord. Mm, by the way, she's not making that up. The Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice when one comes into that personal relationship, mm -hmm. true redemption. Uh, God gave you a dream mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in this journey that was very poignant. It seemed mm -hmm. to really illustrate mm -hmm. the struggle that you were having mm -hmm. with religion versus true faith, mm -hmm. redeeming faith. Mm -hmm. Yes, he gave me a dream uh, one night and uh, I woke up and I realized I had had this dream and it was about a person who had been covered with all kinds of crappy things like d dead leaves and, and dirt and, and the rain had come down and, and all this stuff had been stuck to this person. And um, I was thinking of a particular person that I wanted to pray for from about after having had this dream. But I realized that the Lord was also showing me that there were things that I had stuck to me. And he showed me that all this stuff that was stuck to me was lies, lies of, from the enemy. And you know, God wants to replace those lies with truth. But we first of, have, first of all have to know what those lies are and, and, and so that we can receive the truth. And God, sometimes we have a mindset that needs to be changed. Some distorted theology piled up in mm -hmm. there. That's right. Uh, because the Word of God hadn't been part of your life. You didn't no. read the Bible. No. In fact, when I started to read the Bible, it was like Greek to me. But I wanted to know God. I wanted to get to know Jesus more that I, I persisted. And I eventually went to, took some Bible courses and Bible studies. And I, I know little by little, day by day, you grow as a Christian and you get rooted and grounded in the word. But the mindsets that, you know, that I had to get changed in my life was when I had received Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord, my spirit was saved by grace through faith. But then I went right back under the law to start working out the salvation of my soul, thinking that I had to earn God's salvation. 
I er had to earn his approval and his acceptance. And, um, you know, I wanted to, sh to keep short accounts with God. So you were uh, really striving. Yes. Uh, for self-righteousness. Yes, yes. Uh, it was self-righteousness. And the Bible says that self-righteousness is as filthy rags to the Lord. And um, so, you know, I, I, I was uh, trying to earn my salvation of my soul, trying to get rid of all the sin in my heart and uh, trying to keep short accounts with God. So every wrong thought that came to me, I would confess it to the Lord. And really, the Lord showed me that I was being sin conscious. When I came to understand grace, and, I, and I, he showed me that I was being sin conscious, that I was focusing on si the sin in my life, trying to get rid of the sin in my life, where he wanted me to be God conscious, to focus on Jesus, to get to know him, to get my mind renewed with the word of God. The truth and to that sets you yeah, free. It's the truth that Doesn't sets sound like there was much freedom in that no, journey. No, there wasn't, no. It was legalistic. Mm -hmm. It was bondage. But Jesus said in Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, that he came to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. He came to set us free from that bondage, that legalism. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, about five years ago, I picked up a book on grace and I began to read it. And grace is unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor of God. Oh, boy, <laughs> did that set me free when I came to know God's grace. Can I give us an, another well-known verse, Ephesians 2, verse 9? Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. Mm -hmm. So none of us can boast about it. No. Someone said righteousness is not a do, it's a done. Yes. Jesus paid it all yes. at Calvary. Yes. So what that must have been a just a huge weight lifting. Oh, it was night to day. And this happened to you as a believer. As a believer, That is the yes. surprising thing. You yes. were a believer living in bondage. Yes. And you know, as a believer, most of my Christian walk, I mixed grace and law together. And I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but you know, like when I came to understand grace, and I came to realize that at the point of salvation, Jesus gave me the gift of righteousness. He gave me his very own righteousness. Mm -hmm. In fact, I can't get any more righteous than what I am right now mm -hmm. because Jesus gave me his very own righteousness. And that was so, so freeing, so liberating because so many Christians are trying to develop righteousness. Well, I stopped trying to do that and I stopped trying, you know, being sin conscious. And I just started receiving forgiveness of my sins and, and enjoying the Lord in my life, just enjoying Him. Mm. It was awesome. Just delicious. Mm. It's just delicious. wonderful yes. Yes. to hear this and how we want this for everyone. Yes. Well, I have something wonderful to share, but um, I'm going to warm it up with what is happening right here.